what up what up everybody this is Darius Black from Living Life Fearless and we are back with another podcast of Music Files today's date September 27 2017 with me as always is Mr. Darius Walker say what up to everybody what's up everybody artist Darius Walker I'm glad you guys are back thank you and we're here to talk about music yeah welcome back to our podcast where we talk about music the latest news latest goings on what music we're listening to currently and anything you know that has to do with music basically so let's get right to it um i wanted to speak about this last time uh in our other podcast the fearless show but i uh i forgot so and and i actually happens to match it pretty well with this one so i'm gonna open up with talking about the rolling stone it is Mm. going under it is (laughs) for the first time in since it was created, what, 70? I don't know how many years ago that was. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, I uh, I was a little shocked. When I'm I, shocked uh, right now. This is the first I've heard. I didn't know they weren't going on. That's yeah. amazing. It's, uh... I, I, I read it last week or the week before. I can't remember exactly. But... Essentially, I don't know how long it uh, how long has how long has been around. First of all, it's got to be twenty twenty five years, I mean, something like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, at least, yeah, I read that Warner Media, who owns the magazine publication, is putting it up for sale. It was founded in nineteen sixty seven, bro. Yeah, so it's been around for a while. Um, Goddamn. <laughs> oh, shit. In terms of magazines and just, like, dealing with music and, like, culture That's and 60, stuff like that. 70 years. 70 years? All right. Or 60, is it? Come on, bro. Get your math right. It's 60 years. <laughs> it's, is it? Shit. 1967. Hey, I'm going with 60. Rolling Stones. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's off, but I don't even go care. Ahead. I'm just gonna go ahead and just say that's off. But it's been around for a while, folks. Um, maybe over 50 years, for sure. But um, yeah, in terms of just like iconic magazines and publications and you know just stuff like that that has to do with music in any way shape or form that has to be at the top of the list Mm -hmm. that's amazing I still can't believe it (laughs) that's just that's one of those magazines that you always hear about in music conversations in terms of print yeah it's kind of like like the it's like the the New York Times of newspapers (laughs) or papers like you know Basically, it um, it's, they it's like the counterculture bible, basically. Oh, well, it was the counterculture bible, um, right? You know, they covered stuff that nobody else was covering at the time, especially when rock and roll was first start really popping off, and you know, it was, it was the counterculture music at the time. So, and they were covering that whole lifestyle and just all that other stuff that was going on. And it was like just the perfect storm for them. But I think over the years, I honestly, as big as it is, I honestly probably have not read a full article from them ever. <laughs> hey, I'm right there with you. I was never a big Rolling Stones guy. I just it looked like a paper that was like too fancy for me or something. Like I just maybe it was just. Like, I'm like, ah, I'm probably not going to agree with their opinions that the writers had. I don't know. It just looked like something I wouldn't agree with. Um, I think it's just that they have failed to keep up with the changing scene in the times. For right. For sure. Because um, rock and roll is no longer, like, the counterculture. and Exactly. The magazine was cool because it was about the counterculture. And, like, they still put on, like... The front of their covers, all these old acts that, mm-hmm. you know, people like us are not going to, like, go running to the magazine for. They've been on, like, a <laughs> right. magazines already. 
Exactly. When, if magazines had more important exclusives, then people would care. Like, if it's yeah. not online, and it, you're literally like, yo, we have a full interview with your favorite artist, but it's only in print, and you have to get it at the store, and it's going to be lining up. They're going to go get it, because that's the only way to get it. If that's the only way to get it, it'll finally be online, of course, obviously, because you know how online works. <laughs> you know, once it's physical, there's somebody's going to scan it or something, but hey. Yeah. And it becomes I, I, like a collector's edition. I just think they lost, like, it was a very youth-focused, you know, thing. And I just think they lost complete touch with the youth. Yeah. Like, the youth isn't listening to you 2 anymore or, like, Steven Tyler and them, like, anymore. Like, yeah, they're cool, but that's not who is making the biggest moves in culture at anymore you know so and like the people mm -hmm. actually making the moves in culture they're not covering until it's like way too late yeah exactly because the the wave now is like we want to hear it within a week of it happening you know for sure like so it's like it's really hard now to like keep up with the attention span because people are gonna have already gone through so much information once your shit finally comes out and even if it's the best it's like still Everybody's already been like fed too much about that same situation or whatever information you're trying to provide by then. Yeah, there's like 20 just random guys, well, probably more than that, just random guys on YouTube already talking about it, you know, the next day. Right. Uh, academics, for one, that's how he got on, basically. Yeah. Just talking about shit that's happening. Immediately. Like, he, oh, that just happened? I'm going to talk about it. Yeah. Like, you know, so, <laughs> I mean, that's cool. And, but I can't, I can't ride that wave. I'm going to talk about stuff that just happened, but that's not my purpose online. Yeah, and he's just like covering acts, like young acts that I don't even know. Like, you know. Slight hype beast. Honestly, academics, he, look, he's like 27. He looks older. Roughly than my age, which is crazy. <laughs> right? So. This is probably just, you know, the, hey, they add 10 pounds on camera, whatever bullshit nah, he wants to say. But, but. <laughs> right? He looks like he's almost the same age as Joe or some shit. <laughs> he looks like he's 30 for sure. Yeah, but nah, Ak, Ak is, he's, he's a crazy dog. Because honestly, the only thing that I do like is because he talks to these young cats, he has, he's like a revival of old radio where artists had to talk to the DJs, like, directly, these artists are talking to him on his platform directly. Yeah. Like, outside of the TV show that uh, Complex has. Like, they just hit him up, and they want to be on his stream just talking shit. Yeah, I mean, they kind of got... So, like... He kind of got on that show because he had such direct access to a lot of these newer acts, younger acts. Yeah, and pe most nobody will know their names still nope. right now. Like most of the people he knows, like a lot of people won't know. Yeah. Um, the the most famous two are like X Tentacion and Lil, Lil Uzi. Uzi, maybe Lil Yachty, I guess, because his name is so popular. Yeah, I I mean I don't fuck with Act, but I'm just saying like he covers new acts like that are actually what young young people are listening to yeah. or like people that are actually you know making waves at the moment rolling stone really hasn't done that in a really really long time um exactly especially like like i said like they bar they rarely cover hip-hop and when they do it's people who are established or like it's way too late by the time mm -hmm. they you know decide to give them any attention and it was just crazy yeah. because they were all about counterculture and hip-hop was the biggest counterculture since you know 1990 well even before mm -hmm. that like 85 on you know so the fact yeah. that they're not it should have just they should have just went more. with being a hip-hop magazine nah, they, they had to be that. a hip-hop magazine there's you know they had the source and <laughs> i know obviously like not because hip-hop's not always the top acts on the charts obviously you know but, but they could have definitely covered more of that stuff going forward and like like even now, like EDM is for sure like Facts. the counterculture, and they they don't cover that. That's crazy though to me. Like EDM is slept on by mainstream media. 
Yeah, but it's like massive, you know, fucking massive. Yeah, people line up just to hear a concert with no lyrics, like literally, literally for hours, rolling. like <laughs> thousands upon thousands go to festivals. Almost an all no lyric festival. Like it's it's not advertised. Like yo, no lyrics. It's just like yo, there's gonna be this DJ and that DJ. They got some new shit, and you're like, oh, like and bags and bags of of Molly, you know. So, bro, uh, the, the drug scene always goes with that. <laughs> yeah, and like they tried over the years to like move away from music being like their number one focus. Um, they tried doing like politics and news and all that other stuff, and they actually had some pretty good pieces. Um, mm-hmm. Like Peabody worthy pieces is just like it's kind of showing you know how out of touch you were with how you started, you right? And they should have just, just branched off. They should have made a separate entity to do things that Rolling Stone couldn't do. So they I mean, I know they I know steam. I know for sure they tried to buy it. They they bought some other like publications. I can't remember off the top of my head what they were, but I know for sure they bought some other publications to try to expand their media group. It wasn't it, right. what I say Warner Media. It was it's Winner uh media. It's mm you know, the guy who founded it. So, like, it was their group, so they owned right. other publications. It's just... They well. <laughs> didn't keep up with their biggest one, and now it's, like, being sold, and which is kind of crazy to think about, but that's what happens, man. All these I mean, I guess that doesn't mean it's to go. entirely dead. <laughs> no, it's not <laughs> dead, but they're definitely, like, you know, they're giving up control of it uh, for the first time ever, and that's still yeah. a big deal, you know? And you never know how and where that's going to go. Um, right. I mean, I'd be lying if I said our stuff, my like our new website wasn't inspired in large part from people like Rolling Stone and Complex and, mm-hmm. and Vice. Well, basically, they try to be Vice. That's honestly what happened. And Vice just has better writers and just more in touch with what's actually going on and get that's more they shit. Could, They're on the ground. Yeah. The motherfuckers are on, on the, the street. Rolling Stone. And uh, so, like I said, like I, it's impossible for me to say, like it's just crazy. It hit closer to me because, like I said, a lot of our stuff is inspired by you know Rolling Stone and Complex and Source and and Vice and like all this stuff that started. I was like these kind of culture, you know, things covering the culture and stuff like that that is just not mainstream. And you it's know. basically like there's a lack. There's like things like I feel like kind of covering the parts that are missed you know like we get, we're talking about the stuff that's like not on i mean that's what stuff. makes me love vice in the first place that's why i fucking love vices because they cover shit that you would there's no way you're hearing about this or knowing about any other shit right before like you can just go on their youtube channel and just get lost and just random shit for like hours you know yeah. I just watched a video about fucking the furry the furry culture. Like oh, fuck cover shit like that, bro. Like, <laughs> like they just cover crazy shit and then, and that's used to be Rolling Stone and like they just don't do that anymore. And like well, breaking new acts is like no longer a viable source of continued like I don't know, success, revenue, whatever you want to say, but like it's not no longer viable because it's just there's new shit popping off all the time. People kind of put themselves on now, you know, and like so like you're no longer that source that people go to for when there's like a million other places you can go or you can just go directly to SoundCloud, you know, so like that. So, mm. so yeah, Rolling Stone is being sold for the first time since, would you say, 62? 67. 67. I mean, I'm just looking at Rolling Stone right now and like, who are they covering? Noel Gallagher, Steven Tyler, you know. It's just like, come on. You gotta cover more than that. Much more than that. Well, that's the way it goes. We'll see what the new ownership does, I suppose. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's a big name. Like, it's massive. Come on, like, it's by far the biggest name in 
that realm. Um, so I can't imagine it, you know, going away. Right. But, hey. But crazy in things terms have happened, of so. New music and breaking artists. Let's talk about some of the new hotness that's been dropping. Um. What you been listening to? Go ahead, start. You can go ahead and start. You, uh, you said that well, you would listen to, to all these new hip hop and R and B and you know urban oh, records yeah. that I've dropped. So yeah. I've not caught on any of those. Word. So I've been heavy on the urban scene right now. All the urban music straight to my ears. <laughs> nah. But anyways, some fire dropped this weekend. And let me just tell you, I was not expecting it. I was not ready for the fire. I didn't even know. There wasn't like a rollout that warned me, but Janae Aiko, she's Janae like... Janae Aiko. Yeah, Janae Aiko. She's... Oh my God. I'm so shocked. Like her shit is flames. Like her shit is so good, she probably took Lord out of my top five. Like Janae Aiko. Really, no. That's, yeah. a, that's a tough one. No, because here's the thing. Janae Aiko just dropped a 23-minute short film with the rollout. And that short film is good, dog. Like, she she could win an Emmy for that, prob, dog. Like, she was act. I didn't even know she could act. Like, she put it. I watched that, and I was like, yeah. I love being Oscar, but yeah. Hey, Janae Aiko killed her shit right now. Like, that shit is fire. That shit is A1. That's been on repeat since I put it down, just like the SZA album. But I'm not putting her above SZA. Even though I kind of should, because I've been rocking with Janae Aiko before I even knew who SZA was. So, shout out to Janae Aiko. Because, look, she even had a Big Sean song. I, didn't, I thought they were like all done with that stuff, but she had a track with Big Sean on there. And that was actually not bad. I actually like that. It wasn't one of my favorite songs on the album. Let me go look it up real quick. The album had a lot Above of tracks. Above Lord, though. Mm. I love Lord, but Janae Echo had this concept album that was grittier than Lord's was. It's like some shit that... Well, was, Lord's not a gritty artist. I mean, she, but she sings gritty, so you'd think maybe she had, had some street shit to do, but... She's know. just a new age pop artist, that's all. Yeah. She's not gritty. I feel you on that. But at the same time, Janaiko's been out here since uh, B2K era. Since Omarion yeah, does, came out. Does it sound like her debut album, Sale Out? What I think that's what it was called? No, this is her best sold project. Out, whatever. All, sale Out, because I did not like out, her debut There was Sale all. Out, and then there was Sold Out. So there was two different projects. Yeah, I didn't like her debut, though. I like at all. So I know. That's why I'm having a hard that's time independent, imagining man. this being... Uh, being good so maybe you don't like her vibe and her style Did nah you like the I really album? do cause I, I really fucked with her uh, first mixtape okay. I can't remember if it sell out or sold out can't remember Yeah. but I really fucked with the first mixtape and okay. then she came up with her debut album and it was super underwhelming yeah yeah I think that was sold out <laughs> yeah, kinda soul sold out S-O-U-L-E-D sold out but yeah Janae Echo, well, this is a concept album. So the other ones were kind of, I feel like, just prequels, obviously prequels, but they were like leading up to something like this project. And because of the visuals, this shit is flames. Like, in terms of R&B, it's one of the top five R&B, maybe top five <clears throat> albums of the year. This class. Top five. Yeah! I'm telling you right now. Like, and only because you have to revisit it. There's so much on there, but she's telling you something every moment. It's not like this mumble rap shit or like, like yo, Kendrick's shit took us through some shit, but Janae Aiko's shit is like one whole storyline. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a threaded fucking paper. Like it's crazy. It's it's as it's like debut- it's as good as Scissor's album. Kind like honestly, I could put them on the same level, low key. And it just came out. I mean, personally, I like Lord more than Scissor's album, but that's just me personally. Hey, well, you probably still like Lord more than uh, Jenna Echo's album, but I'm just saying, she's up there, 
right now. But the biggest surprise for me this weekend was Rhapsody. This rapper, of uh, Rhapsody. Rhapsody, this female rapper that I kind of vaguely heard of, but didn't really know about, just dropped in. For most people, all right, so most people haven't heard of her. So most people <laughs> who don't know who we're talking about, this is, you probably know her from, well, for sure you know her from Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly. She was one of the few features on there. She's probably the one that seemed most out of place if you don't know your hip hop history. But uh yeah, ever since ever since he put her on to to Pimp Butterfly, she uh she kinda had a resurgence. Well not kinda, she definitely had a resurgence and you know, people were looking for her stuff. Mm-hmm. And now she's actually building up to an album. I don't know if this was oh, her yeah. album or not, or just another mixtape. Oh, it, it's an album. It's it's, it's an it's album. Flames. It's an album. So this is what she's been building up to since then. Yeah. So she's basically built up. And I didn't even know it was dropping, but here's the thing. It was so shocking. It's called uh, Layla's Wisdom. And honestly, this feels like, this feels like uh, GK, like GKMC. Like this feels like Good Kid, Bad City for like a female rapper. Like this shit is so hard, like in poetic and crazy like the production is nasty like i was really shocked honestly i'm just gonna say she's a dope bar she's a dope rapper i think she's super underrated but like the project is really well done and she's a dope rapper so like she has kendrick on the project too obviously since we were like talking oh yeah kendrick you better check that song out homie that shit is all bars though there's no there's no like you know this album isn't for people who like catchy hooks, basically. This is like real rap shit. I'm cool with those. I love an album like that. So you're saying I need to check out Janae Aiko and Rhapsody. I mean, yeah, if you're looking for more bars and you're feeling that vibe, go to the Rap City first. Because if you're not feeling like, you know, like like slow down and like relax, you know how R&B relax you and shit and you get like all like, yeah. I'm still a, still a little skeptical about your... I go praise, but you know, we'll stop checking. I'll, I'll, I'll see. And here's, I'll, I'll okay, you want some criticism though? My only criticism is for some reason, off the first few listens, I like the second half better than the first half. Okay. Who else you been listening to? Um, oh, Kevin Gates. He dropped something. He's a rapper. He pretty much dropped what I expect. Uh, his album. Sounds like his mixtapes or his last album. It's it's all good in that style. It wasn't by any means, too. Was that album or was that a mixtape? It's a project <laughs> that I'm sure yeah, it's, gets paid for it, in terms of It's strings. pretty much impossible to tell nowadays, you know? It's all the same, uh, right? Because mixtapes have, like, all original shit nowadays, so it's kind of yeah, hard. Yeah, like, I don't, like, because, I mean... Drake slash shit wasn't an album, but we still talk about it like it's an album, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. It's hard it's to like, define. I don't know what it was. Really, what constitutes an album or mixtape these days? When a mixtape, when when they say it's a mixtape, but then it has all original production, uh, so it's kind of right. like oh, okay, so it's an album that you just didn't have enough confidence in in selling, mm-hmm. basically. <laughs> oh, one thing I do need to mention. Cardi B. She just went number one on the charts, Billboard, for uh, Bodak Yellow. And apparently... She I thought it was number one. but No, nah, it wasn't number one it, uh, for a minute. It was number two under Taylor Swift. Because Taylor drops a single. She That's... was coming out with her rollout. So Taylor was coming out with her rollout and, and stunted the growth. But hey, Cardi B surpassed that. And uh, congrats to her. For breaking records, this is, this is insane. Uh, <laughs> she look, Nicki Minaj hasn't done this. Nicki Minaj didn't break this record. Okay, Rihanna ain't break this record. What, what record was it? The, the the record is is going number one without a feature. Of well, no, ra- ra- oh. this rapper. I think it's female rapper specific. Actually, I got I got Nicki didn't have one. No, not without a not no. without a feature. If Drake or Wayne's on it, it doesn't count in this category. 
Like, this is crazy. It doesn't uh, count with the feature. So that's what I said. She didn't have a feature on it, and it went that length. And so it hasn't happened in a minute. Basically, this is 2017 version of Coco. Um, <laughs> I'm in love with the Coco, for people that I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I haven't even heard that comparison, but that's actually pretty close. I like that comparison. This is basically the 2017 version of that. Uh, it goes hard in the club, and I told you, it, and it's it goes as hard, especially for girls. But like, she can't actually rap, and she's just talking on there. Yeah, she's just. But what she's saying on there is like hype shit for girls that like can finally be aggressive to, mm-hmm. and it's like the female version of that. Yeah, they, they don't get that ever in the club. Like, if a girl's get like, going hard like that, girls, ew, girls are girls hard in the club. They get aggressive, but it's like to guys. Rapping about guy shit or like right. typical guy shit. And this is a girl rapping hard shit about girl shit, like exactly. shoes and fashion and all this shit. Like, mm-hmm. so it's basically the the 2017 version of Coco. Right. Um, it almost remind me of well, that that's rude, <laughs> but I'll say it anyway because I thought it. I thought it reminded me of Crayshawn when she came out with all her. Crazy. Her g- gimmicky, uh, Gucci gooey, mm. Gucci Gucci Louis Louis Fendi Fendi product. She was never as big as this. Not even close, though. I that feel like, like a, that's a. But Twitter, she was all more the social media was then. where it's at now, though. It was it was bubbling up. That was before Khaled Snapchat. Nah. That was like that was a different age of social media. <laughs> it's just crazy for. The, those that say you can't make it an American man, she was a stripper a year ago. Yeah, uh, working at Aces. A career stripper. A career a stripper. stripper. Uh, like, and now she has a fucking number one single in, on the Billboard charts. Online. Which is. She has a number yeah, one single on the Billboard charts. Yeah. She went the, and, and she said it in the song. With I don't no gotta dance. I make money. Woo. Like, she fucking did it. By saying it, that's crazier to me, honestly. It's like, that's kind of dope. You gotta give her props for that. Like, shit. <laughs> I'll give her props when she has a second single that. Exactly. Like. That, you know, like, the thing about it is, like, I'm giving her props for the single, but not for her career yet. Like, because everybody knows she copied the song. Well, not everybody knows. Everybody who likes music knows that she copied Kodak Black's. Uh, no flocking. Basically, all the cadence, the whole song, she basically switched words in for it to sound like girl talking to girl instead of like Kodak talking to niggas, you know? So that whole thing basically. is a copy. But with a new, slightly upbeat cadence that hits the club, and she just killed that shit. So that's the thing, is I hope Kodak's getting some bread off that number ones, by the way. <laughs> Uh, I think he did a remix. Or oh something yeah, he did a remix. But, uh, the remix okay. To it's what? Like, mm, it's what percentage are you giving her for actually sticking around in rap? Oh, that's a hard one. I mean, I feel like she's preparing for a rollout though. Like, I feel like there's another single that's gonna come I, in. Like, I don't. I feel like this month, was just within the next four weeks in a bottle to <laughs> six at the longest. There's gonna be a new single. And she's going to be prepping for a rollout for her album. And so, honestly, I'm not going to I'm not gonna put my foot on my mouth just yet in terms of her longevity. No, no, no. Go ahead. Give me. You you just said she had this planned out. She had a rollout. She, she has an album but on the way. So, give me a percentage. A parent, but she's young. She's like 24, think? 95. She's just now getting what, up what on the What percentage chance game. does she, she have to stick in rap? I heard she's Are like you giving her 50%, herself. 60%? So I don't know. It could be. You sound like you're giving her 80%. I don't know. Cause she, look, you sound she like, don't have the You sound like you're saying 80% like, right now. Like Little Yachty. So if her album flops like Little Yachty's did, she's not going to be as good afterwards like he was. Like he's still going to be fucking like You just sound like, like you're Macy's giving her 80%. Whatever the fuck it is. Gap, I don't know. You sound like you're giving her eighty percent. That's all hey, I'm gonna say. Like I said, I have to hear her next project, dog. I can't. I can't even put a percent on. It. If I have to put it on right now, her next project. She ain't got her first project out. Okay, she's had some stuff, but that's what I'm saying. 
she got a new man. She got a new team right now. She got a new team. So what percentage? Based off of her two mixtapes in six months and this one single, <laughs> going number one. <laughs> I would say she's probably going to be here for three and a half years. And that's Ooh, three and generous. a half years. Uh, I gave her like two tops. You gave her two tops. <laughs> tops. I mean, so that's what I'm saying. If the album comes out and I see some artist, like some artistry and some fucking immaculate delivery laced over this great. Have you heard her talking about how she made the single? Yeah, exactly. Why I'm not expecting. She it. just went into there and was just saying shit that just popped in her head. But it was lies, though. Yeah, how often is that gonna work out for you? But it wasn't lies. She actually. All I'm saying is, I give her two years tops. Right. So besides <laughs> Cardi B news, which I've had more than enough of, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna just say what I've been listening to. Yep. Yeah, what you been on? I haven't been on any of that rap shit. All that hippity hop. I've been off that for the past week and a half. (laughs) Cleansing. Have not listened to it. Not one Uh, rap song. Fasting on rap Um, right now. No. Fasting off. off. I, uh... I've been listening to a bunch of rock, man. A bunch of rock and roll. What kind of rock have you been listening to? (sighs) Well, a bunch of good shit dropped. Um, and it's a good mix, too. Great mix. Yeah. One of my favorite bands of all time. Uh, probably top three favorite modern rock and roll bands. Foo Fighters. Oh. Came out the new album. Really? Yeah, they did. Oh, I missed that. Um, called Concrete and Gold. Oh, that sounds hard. That sounds tight. Um... I was a little disappointed. I did not love it like I was mm. hoping I would. Mm. I'll say this about them. At this point, they are... But how old are they now, though? They've been around for a while. I want to say this is what, their eighth album, seventh album, something like that. Yeah. Um, that doesn't even count, you know. Their lead singers was with Nirvana. Um, mm-hmm. So... A while, a long time. They're like old now, like they're vets. Um, they're like old, reliable. They always put out solid rock music, rock and roll. Um, but they're kind of hitting that that rut where it's not terribly interesting. Like it's good, yeah, but it's nothing new, and it's like nothing yeah. innovative, and it's nothing really fresh, and they don't really take any risk outside of their normal formula yeah so that's basically what this album was it was just more of the mm-hmm. same but super safe more of the same but probably to an even lesser quality oh, sh- um, yeah cause they didn't have the passion yeah it feels like that's what it feels like I just I didn't feel it at all um, there are a couple great songs on there like I'll listen to it because I still love them. It's just like <laughs> Run, The Sky's Neighborhood. It's another great one, Arrows. But it's just Happy Ever After. Um, but it just didn't hit like I thought it was going to. They've, uh, they're still one of my favorites. They just haven't really put out an album recently. That's felt like they love doing this, you know. Mm. I feel you. Where they're trying new things and they're excited to new new stuff and stuff like that. I mean, like, that's just... what I, that's what I look for in a great album. So yeah. That's why when I went on those rants earlier, that's what I was talking. About. What's that feeling? And that yeah. feeling is in those projects. Those two projects, boy. But I'm telling you right now. Yeah. So it, it wasn't great, but. Still love them. I still listen to Echoes, Silence, Patience, and Grace all the time. Uh, that's like yeah. my favorite albums of theirs ever. Um, just wasn't all that. But 
who did come out that was all that was Queens of the Stone Age. They came out with one of the hardest rock albums this year. Really? For sure. If you like hard rock, you need to fucking listen to the Queens of the Stone Age Villains. Villains is the name of the album. Um, that sounds dope. The cover art is dope as fuck. You should check it out. Um, yeah, it's just hard. Like, it's only nine tracks, but it's deceiving because every song is like mm. five minutes long, over five and a half minutes long, basically. Oh, that's dope. That's um, that's how you do it if you're gonna do a short album. Yeah, and and the songs, you know, so make it on purpose, like really on purpose. Yeah, and the songs feel super layered. Like they, some of them feel like two, three songs in one. Basically, how they switch things up in the middle of the song, and like it's just hard as fuck. And if you know the Queens of Stone Age, they're a hard fucking rock band. Um, and you can like if you listen to both of them. They're both technically both hard rock, but you can tell the Queens of the Stone Age still love doing this shit. Why are the Foo Fighters? I'm not so sure. Mm. <laughs> like, Queens of the Stone Age, like, they're known for that harder, edgier sound, and this time they, they tried something new. They took risks and they worked with Mark Ronson. Mm. And for those that don't know who Mark Ronson is, which is kind of crazy at this point, but, uh, he did 24 karat gold with Bruno Mars oh, and all man. that. Um, well, I just looked him up on my phone. Queens of the Stone Age has got a nice tour lined up. So, for any of you Queens of the Stone Age fans, let me just tell you right now, they're going to play Madison Square Garden for my New York people out here uh, October 24th. So, you can get tickets for that while they're still there. Uh, my people in Colorado, <laughs> you know how we started out there. They're playing at the Red Rocks October 10th. The Red Rocks is hands down the best amphitheater in America. Uh, arguably. Hands down. Arguably. But uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely check this out. Molly. You love hard rock. That shit goes hard as fuck. And I've been listening to it on repeat for a while. Um, yeah. So and then, of course, I'm still checking with Grizzly Bear Painted Ruin. Which I talked about last time. Yeah. And it's one of my favorite albums probably this year. Have you had to check in? Yeah, you're slick. You're slacking. <laughs> and we listen hey. to fucking Cardi B. But, uh. <laughs> Just that single. <laughs> the National. The National also came out with a very, very, very good album. Um, called Sleep Well Beast. Mm. You know, I. I call the national like ballroom rock and roll, basically. Uh, all their past shit, like it's super soft rock, and like you can just tell, like even when they're performers, they come out suit and tie, and you know, just looking very sharp and high class. And it's good, mm-hmm. like chill out music, like you know, relaxed music, relaxing rock and roll, basically. Yeah, like that's when I went. Right. Yeah, but this one they went a little bit harder, man. Like they, there's something going around, you know. Huh. They got a little edgier. Um, they, well, in their terms, <laughs> definitely not Queens of Stone Age, but got a little edgier, and it was uh, probably one of my favorite albums they've ever done. Mm. Okay. I so like you should artists that I like can deliver, you know, and like. Give me something new that I love even more than I already love for shit. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't like super excited for it because I just wasn't in that mood for that type of soft rock. Um, But then I was like, man, let me just check it out, and I'm glad I did because that shit was very satisfying. Listen to Turtleneck uh, for sure, or Day I Die if you have not heard that already, and. uh, yeah, and then the last one I listened to was The Killers. They just came out with a new album called Wonderful Wonderful. I didn't even hear about that either. I'm sleeping um, on the rock. I've been sleeping. Yeah, well, I mean, that's why I'm here to expand your guys' music horizons and step your shit up. Uh, it's, uh... I'll say it, it was very dissatisfying. Um, God damn it. Yeah, I uh, I was looking forward to it. 
I've never been a huge Killers fan outside of, you know, their big singles. But after they had like a great couple great music videos for The Man and uh, Run For Cover and I heard like one other song, I was excited for the album. And those were literally the only few songs I liked (laughs) (laughs) on the whole thing. It's just... They're just average. They're just average. They're just a very average rock man. <laughs> so I, I could not recommend this album at all. But Queens of Stone Age, Villains, The National, Sleep Well Beast, definitely go check that out. Um, well, breaking news. Breaking news back to hip-hop. Um... Young Dolph has just been hospitalized after he got shot in Hollywood. What? Yeah. In Hollywood? Yep. I'm reading it right now. Yet rapper Young Dolph has been hospitalized after being shot repeatedly in Hollywood. Damn. Um, for those that don't know, the irony in this is he just released a mixtape called Bulletproof, what, two months ago? Three months ago? Yeah, something like that. That was That's the first thing I thought of when he said Young Dolph. I was like, oh, Yeah. Like, how? Like, um, yeah, people tried to get him, the, what, three, four months ago, and he had a bulletproof, he was in his bulletproof truck, though. But I hear mm-hmm. they unloaded, like, almost, like, 100 bullets or some, some, some crazy shit like oh, that. Oh, my God. Um... They training day his ass at the end of it. Oh, no jokes. I'm sorry. Yo, I, I take that back. That, that wasn't me. Get at Darius for all you young Dolph fans. <laughs> Yo, don't uh, attack me for that. Get at artist, Dolph, at artist at D. Walker. My prayers uh, are out to your family and friends. I did not mean any disrespect. <laughs> that wasn't me. That was Darius Walker. I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, so I'm just reading now. I say he didn't matter a whole lot to say, but it said that he got shot repeatedly in Hollywood. Just three months after he released the Bulletproof mixtape, so a little ironic. Um, yep. Man, you gotta. Can't. Anybody can get touched, and the fact that people just like basically brazenly. Uh, Why are you inviting it? You tempt invite, fate like asking. that? Yeah, you kind of inviting that energy to you still. Yeah. That's and, why I'm worried about Kodak Black. Yeah. It's just not good, man. Like, he just got shot. Who was it? Drake, Drake's boy just got shot and killed. Um, fifth or something like that. I forgot. I don't know. Um... Yeah, that's his name, Fifth. F-I-F. F-I-F. I I remember this one because TMZ fucking released a video of it actually happening. Mm -hmm. Wow. Is that not crazy? Like, oh, I was just talking about shit. Is that not crazy to you that news, like, cable (laughs) news type shit, like, gossip news, like, just Mm -hmm. releases, like, video of a guy getting gunned down and like we're playing it over and over that shit is I just I, <laughs> well some people would say they wish news showed the real shit but like this is gossip news like gossip news yeah it's just crazy no, to me that way at this point I'm looking, like, at, I'm looking at a gossip news site the Young Dolph, so it says rapper Young Dolph shot multiple times in Hollywood. The story under it says, for the culture, we remix some of our favorite childhood movies. <laughs> like, like it goes from like, yo, somebody got shot to like, check this out, guys. Like, like that's what you're talking about. Exactly. It's like, it's fucking trash news. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I've never liked, I've never liked TMZ. I've always thought TMZ was just fucking slime ball, fucking sleaze ball organization, just like World Star Hip Hop and yeah, 
They'll just do anything. They'll just do anything to get viewers and people watching their shit. Like the OG trolls. They'll go as far as playing a guy's fucking murder over and over. Crazy. Yeah, but like, yeah, that's uh, as fuck. Drake's friend, you know, gunned down in Toronto. Young Dolph shot repeatedly in Hollywood. Man, uh, like, can't keep inviting that energy, man. I mean, on another serious note, since I'm sliding down this news, Daddy Yankee, remember him? Yeah. Apparently, he do- he donated over a million dollars to the Puerto Rico hurricane relief. I didn't even know he still had it like that to just be donated. Yeah, uh, he's actually massive in Europe still. I can speak for him on that. Oh, that makes Um, sense because his music's so hard. But, like, I just haven't heard it on the radio I hear that much. Nah, you know how America is. They move on from shit. But uh, this way, they they love something. They fucking love something, man. Like, I saw Akon still fucking tours all through Europe. Oh, what? uh yeah, Akon. You know Akon drops albums that don't release in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> that's my thing. That's the gold. See, that's how you um, do it though. That's right. Same with Daddy Yankee. He still drops albums that don't release in the U.S. It's just reggaeton is big out here. Like still, like it's really big out here still, and people mm-hmm. still fuck with it. You know, we went through our what one two year phase of reggaeton, but. We right. moved on. Like, we move on to shit, like, in a hurry. But yeah. I hear, yeah, they still fuck with them heavy. That's right. So, shout out to Daddy Yankee for fucking donating to the relief fund for the hurricane. I just gotta country. say, did you hear what Trump said about Puerto Rico? Um, His statement on it? Nah, because pretty much all I've heard about was what Trump said about Colin Kaepernick in the NFL. Yeah, that's for another, <laughs> like, that's for another show. I'll keep this. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he said... Uh, what was it exactly? It was something like when we were talking about Puerto Rico, he was like, Yeah, the ocean is really, really big. You know, really, really big and just like kept reiterating how big the ocean was. Uh-huh. Instead of talking about what the fuck he was gonna do to like help Puerto Rico out and shit like that. Like Right. And it was just just another very odd million odd statement from our fucking president of the United States. But yeah. Oh shit! Uh, I guess this is for a different episode. <laughs> the time just dropped some shit like forty minutes ago about that exact shit. Trump talking about the hurricane and shit. So yeah, it's just kind of like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I, this is amazing. I just can't believe what's going on. It's it's wow. It's like a different fucking world we live in. <laughs> it's so awkward. It's just awkward. It's just strange. It's like, uh, we'll see. I don't know, man. We got a few more years of this shit, so <laughs> fuck it. Hopefully, some good music keeps dropping. <laughs> yeah, shit. Need a mile more, never. Um, for sure. Yeah. Gonna need some good sounds to, to get me through, guys. So keep dropping fire like all the great albums that we love. So in terms of, well, I want I want to do this new segment where we talk about new upcoming albums, noteworthy. Mm. Um, so for this week, September 29th, you get the new Miley Cyrus. Younger now. Oh yeah, I could, yeah. Um, Hertz is dropping an album called Desire. Shania Twain now. Wolf Alice Visions of a Life. That's for September 29th. Mm. For October 6th, let's see. Ooh, Colts is dropping an album, offering. Um. For those that don't know, you know, they're a rock band. Very dope. Yeah. Um, Marilyn Man. Oh, and by the way, we are going to be covering Colts out in D.C. when they come out there. Oh, nice. In the next couple of weeks. So we'll have, you know, footage and 
uh, pictures from that. Yeah, make sure you check um, out the shots. Marilyn Manson is dropping another album, Heaven Upside Down. Mm. And Citizen, As You Please, is their album on October 6th. So yeah, for so those are albums you know to look out for over the next two weeks, and uh, we'll talk about other albums, not coming albums, next show. Ooh, ooh, there's some fire coming the week after that. I don't want to. There is. I don't want to name drop. Yeah, we'll wait for the next episode. So we're gonna talk about it for the next one, but yeah, there, there's some shit coming out. Oh my god, are you serious? They're dropping two? Oh. oh, October 13th. I can't wait for that. Okay, anyways. Thanks, guys. <laughs> are we going to talk about anything else, though, before I try to, like, wrap it up? <laughs> um, nah, I think we're covering pretty much everything we want to talk about. It wasn't a big, big couple weeks in new music. Um, just some random albums here and there, some... Not a ton of news going on outside of, you know, Rolling Stone. But, mm-hmm. yeah, that's it for this week's episode. Oh, it's like it. We're not doing episodes anymore. That's it for this podcast of The Music Files, uh, September 27, 2017. As always, if you guys have any questions, comments, suggestions about this show or any upcoming shows, you can do that directly in our comments or email us at podcast at livinglifefearless.co. Um. Yeah, if you have any thoughts about the albums that have come out, if you agree with Darice on Janae Eichel's last album, or yes. or you agree with me on Cardi B's two year uh, run about to be coming, <laughs> let us know, man. Let, let us, us know, know, and let us know what you think about a uh, Rolling Stone being sold, and if you even read or follow Rolling Stone in the first place. So yeah, until next time. Thanks for listening. I'm Audi.